Section 9.6, multiple bonds. So everything up to now has been, if I had, say, a hydrogen, and I have a second hydrogen, and they overlap, they're going to overlap um, a, symmetrically about, about an intranuclear axis. So here's the axis that goes to the center of each one, and you're going to get a symmetrical region of overlap. Okay. And you're still going to see that. That's going to be called a single bond, uh, where, you, where you have the two orbitals that are overlapped, one from each. And they either are normal orbitals or hybridized orbitals, uh, depending. You're, when you have the valence bond theory and you had these shapes of hybridized and non-hybridized orbitals, um, it suggested the answer to some of the questions of what would cause multiple bonds. How, how would you be able to share, overlap more than one type of bond? So, for instance, if I have something that's like this, and they're all going in different directions, I can imagine overlapping that, right, and creating a bond. But how can I overlap two? I can't line up the molecule to overlap two. Well, when you remember that if you have something like, I don't know, an sp2 orbital, which was, remember, three along the equator and one going up and one coming down, okay? So these were the p's, and so the, this, would, this would be one of the orbitals. Here's the second hybridized orbital. Here's the third hybridized orbital. Remember, <clears throat> that's 120 degrees apart. Let's say I overlap with something and make a bond between it. Well, what will happen is I've got these guys that could also overlap. They can overlap top and bottom, and that's what you're going to see. There's two major types of bonds now. You have the direct tip-to-tip uh, -tip overlap, and that's going to be called a sigma, and then you have the, the P that's coming out of the top and the bottom, and they're going to overlap top to bottom, and that's going to be called a pi. Okay, so you'll have a sigma and a pi, both Greek letters. All right, so here's the normal, what we call a single bond. A single bond is an end-to-end, -end, inter, inter, uh, the, the, uh, the inter axis, the same as before, where they're, that's a tip-to-tip, -tip, okay, it's head-to-head -head overlap, and it's symmetrical, and the electron density is in between, just as we've talked about before. We're just going to call that a sigma bond or a single bond. A sigma, bo a sigma bond and a single bond is the same idea. Well, a pi bond is going to be using these P subshells. Okay, And I bet you that this is where the S subshell and the P subshell came from because they're making bonds as a, as a result. So if I have something here that's sticking out, this is one... Um, molecule, okay, sticking out here, and I'm combining it, say this atom combining with this atom, th I can get regions not tip to head, head to head, but side to side overlap, okay, this side to side overlap, we're going to have one on the top and the one on the bottom. In the meantime, I could have overlapping areas here, this would be like a single bond, and then I have the side to side overlap top and bottom, and that's going to be called a pi bond. And when you have them both, you'll end up with a double bond. You'll have one, one meeting here in the middle and one on the top and uh, above the plane of the molecule and below the plane of the molecule. And that would be above and below the, uh, the nucleus or the axis. And that will be the, uh, the second bond or the pi bond. Okay. So a single bond are always sigma. They're just going to be overlapping. And the sigma is just going to be a regular, what we call a single bond. A double bond is going to have a sigma bond sharing plus one pi bond. So pi for, uh, a pi or a p subshell top and bottom from, from one atom, and then the second p from the second atom, and they're overlapping top and bottom. So if you have a sig if you have a sigma meeting in the middle, okay. So you have a single bond here and then a pi bond also, that's going to be a double bond. 
a triple bond is going to share both. Because if you remember, there are some of these that's going to have a pi sticking out of the side, a, a pi coming out of the middle, like this, and then the other ones coming out of the this side and this side. So this could be your S subshell joining in, okay, making a bond here, and then top and bottom here could make this, uh, the second bond, that would be a double bond, and then top and bottom, side to side here would make a second double bond, which we're gonna call a triple bond. So one sigma bond is a single, one sigma one pi is called a double, and one sigma and two pi is called a triple. Okay, so this is drawing better than I can draw. So here's, here's the shape of the molecule. I've got a double bond here, and I've got three. So I've got three groups attached to the carbon. I've got three electron domains. And if I have three electron domains, back a couple sections, that made a triagonal planar, which was 120 degrees apart. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a one, two, three. And so you're going to end up with the, the last one is the pi bond, which is coming out of the top. Okay, so this is, remember, triagonal bipyramidal. And then if you were to combine those two together, one is going to be overlapping here. That's going to be a sigma bond, which would normally look like a single bond. But you're actually going to share electrons top and bottom in the pi bond. And so when you have a sigma and a pi, that's called a double bond, and that's the double bond from the carbon and the oxygen. Here is a triple bond, okay? Triple bond, I've got two octahedrons, okay? I've got, I've got two octahedrons, so I've got, remember this is a P that's unoccupied, here's a P that's unoccupied, so this is just an SP, this is an SP, and you'll get a sigma bond in the middle between them, and then a pi bond in the y direction, a pi bond in the, in the x direction, and two pi bonds and a sigma bond is a triple. So this is, I think, is ethane. You've got two carbons and two hydrogens, so this would be ethane gas, um, which is a fuel gas. Okay, we need to review a concept of resonance just for a minute. If you remember anything that is localized will be the electrons between two bonds. So let's say I have um, I have a carbon and a carbon and it's making a single bond. The electrons are existing in between those two bonds. They're sharing a room uh, that's being offered by both of these carbons at the same time. And one electron from each is being shared and that's what the bond is. So that's called localized. In the case of a resonance structure, uh, remember, a resonance structure is essentially a blend of, in this case, three possibilities. Uh, this is nitrate, so three possibilities. And so it's not that these electrons are necessarily just living here. They're also free to move, and now you've got them living over here, and then they're moving again, and then they're living over here. So it's almost like a blending of the three. These guys are localized. These guys are localized. These, these double bonds are not localized. They're the pi bonds. Remember, a, a double bond is a sigma plus a pi. These pi electrons are not stuck between these two. Because they're sticking out of the top and the bottom, they're essentially free to move anywhere. And in the case of a resonance structure, they're, they're jumping from one to the next to the next, back to the next, and they're doing it as uh, close to the speed of light. It's just electrons flashing, flashing, flashing. It's speed of electricity, because that's what electricity is, is these movements of electrons. So they're flipping, 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 and this is called resonance. So if you have resonance, say, with a structure like this, where you have a nitrate, and you have N, O, 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 well, what's happening is these guys are not localized. It's a non-localized, it's delocalized electrons. So in one uh, um, instant, they're between these two guys, then they flip, and they're between these two guys, and then they flip, and they're between these two guys. And that's what hybrid means, or that's what a resonance structure means. It's a blending of the two. 
And because the real shape of this atom is not going to be where you're going to have one and then two sticking out, but it's going to be a blending of all, of all three. So you're going to get, in essence, something that looks like this. And this adds to the stability. When you have electrons that are essentially blurring top and bottom, it's making it into a unit of its own, and it's uh, less likely to break apart because these electrons are essentially blurring it and holding it together. And perfect example of resonance is, um, is benzene. Benzene, I've got a double bond here and a double bond here and here, but the resonance structure is this alternate... Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to blur um, between these two, these three possibilities, and then the other possibility. And as a result, you're blurring between top and bottom all the way around. So that is why benzene is very, very stable because these pi electrons and these double bonds are essentially jumping back and forth and back and forth between all the options because they're delocalized. They're streaming around it, and as they stream around it, it's, a, it's electrically very stable.